Hey everybody, Kevin Barnett, welcome back to the Carbide Studio. A little while ago, we had updates to Carbide Create for you. Three new design tools that we introduced into the free version of Carbide Create. Those were well received. We're now adding features to Carbide Motion. We have two new features, one small and one big. First, the small. When utilizing Override, your remaining machine time will be recalculated immediately. Everyone's always trying to optimize their feed rates and now you'll have an idea of exactly how that's going to affect your project timing. That's the small. Let's get to the big. Visualization has come to Carbide Motion. This visualization is gonna help you better understand what your machine is about to do and catch possible errors at the machine. Let's dive in. When you load a file, the first thing you're gonna see is the visualization. You'll be on the Info tab. On that tab, you'll be shown the width, depth, and height of your stock. You'll also be shown your approximate cutting time as well as the tools utilized and how long each tool will be in the project. There are five tabs in total. Next to Info, you'll find the top view. When using a Carbide Create file, you'll notice that your stock is delineated by a yellow box. You'll also see the rapids as well as the toolpaths. Rapids in red, toolpaths in green. The front view is incredibly useful for looking at the depth of cut for each one of your operations, as well as your overall depth of cut. More on that in a second. Go to the ISO view next, and it gives you a very clear picture of where your project lies in space, relative to X, Y, Z, as well as your zero. I find myself frequently using the ISO view to get a good overall picture of the project. The furthest tab to the right will give you the opportunity to view the G-code if you'd like to dissect it in that way. How can visualization help you catch an error? Here's a couple examples. First, I'll load this file. And immediately looking at the stock size up above, you'll see that above the approximate cutting time, we have an indication that we are going to exceed our stock depth. Somewhere along the way, we've made a toolpathing error. The front view does an excellent job of showing the toolpaths going below the level of the yellow bounded stock. This is a common error that can now be caught before you get to cutting your project. This will also help you identify when you have set your Z off the table rather than off the top of your stock. I've run into that. I've seen people in the support queue run into that. I've seen people on the forums run into that problem. The effect usually is that your machine is cutting air above your project and you're not sure why. Go back to the visualization, look at where that zero point is set, look at where the tool paths are going as well as the rapids. It will show you that you're above the level of your stock it turns out the machine will do whatever you tell it to. Next, I wanna show you a real world error that I made where the visualization made it clear to me what I'd done improperly. Recently, I modified one of our Nomad 3s to be 100% clear, combination of Lexan and acrylic, fun project. Go check it out on Instagram. When I began the cut for the right-hand side of the Nomad, the Shapeoko darted to its left and headed to crash into the Y rail. Knowing that the machine typically doesn't do things that it hasn't been told to do, I began an investigation inside the program. It was a Fusion 360 program, so I started there. Unable to find the error inside Fusion 360, I moved back to Carbide Motion. The visualization clearly showed that my zero point was in the upper right of the part rather than the lower left. This allowed me to quickly return to Fusion 360, reset the zero point, and come back and make the cut effectively. There are always those last minute concerns and checks when you're about to cut something that you don't have any more of in the shop, you don't want to make another trip, or when you're cutting a one-of-a-kind item for yourself or a client. There you have it, new features added to Carbide Motion. If you have version 563 or beyond, you're into the new space. Utilize the features, let us know how you're enjoying them, jump in the forums, hit us up on Instagram, and keep making great stuff. We'll be back in the studio again.